Dear learners today, the focus of my presentation is what is observation its nature, types, merits and demerits. Let us first try to understand what is observation. Observation is a research tool commonly used in various fields, including education, psychology, sociology, and natural sciences. Observation, as the name implies, is a way of collecting data through observing viewing scene. It refers to the systematic and structured process of gathering data through direct visual or auditory means, where researchers carefully watch, listen, and document events, behaviors, or phenomena in a research setting. It is a fundamental research method that allows researchers to collect empirical data about the real-world behavior and characteristics of subjects or objects under study. Let me now discuss the nature of observation. The nature of observation as a research tool can be characterized by the following key attributes, systematic and structured. Observation is a systematic and structured process where the researcher carefully plans what, when, and how to observe. Empirical, observation relies on direct, first-hand experiences and the collection of empirical data. Researchers use their senses to gather information about the subject of study. Anoptrusive, observers aim to be anoptrusive and non-intrusive, especially in naturalistic observation. This means they try not to influence or disrupt the behavior of the subjects they are observing. 4. Objective and Factual The nature of observation emphasizes objectivity and factual reporting. Observers record what they see and hear without interpreting, judging, or adding personal bias. 5. Qualitative or Quantitative Observations can be qualitative, descriptive, or quantitative, measured and counted. The choice depends on the research objectives and the nature of the data needed. 6. Verifiable. The data collected through observation should be verifiable, meaning that another researcher should be able to replicate the observation and reach the same conclusions. 7. Flexible and adaptable. Observations can be adjusted based on the evolving needs of the research. Researchers may adapt their observations or protocols to capture unexpected events or changes in the environment. 8. Participant or non-participant. Observers can be participants, meaning they actively engage in the situation being observed, or non-participants, where they remain external observers without participating. 9. Recorded. Observations are documented through notes, audio recordings, video recordings, or other recording methods to ensure that the data is preserved and can be analyzed. 10. Subject to bias. Despite efforts to maintain objectivity, observations are susceptible to various forms of bias, including observer bias, confirmation bias, and selection bias. What are the different types of observation? 1. Naturalistic observation. This type of observation involves studying subjects in their natural environment without any interference or manipulation by the researcher. It is often used to gain insights into everyday behaviors and interactions. 2. Participant observation. Researchers actively participate in the setting or group they are observing. They become part of the environment and may interact with the subjects. This method is commonly used in ethnographic research. 3. Non-participant observation. In contrast to participant observation, Non-participant observation involves researchers remaining separate from the subjects and not participating in the activities being observed. They maintain a more objective stance. 4. Structured observation. Researchers use predetermined, specific guidelines or a structured checklist to observe and record behaviors. This method is useful when quantitative data about specific behaviors are required. 5. Unstructured observation. Unstructured observation is more flexible and allows researchers to observe and document a wide range of behaviors and events. There are no strict guidelines or checklists, and the observer can adapt to the situation. 6. Controlled observation. Controlled observation takes place in a controlled or artificial setting, allowing researchers to manipulate certain variables. 
This method provides more control over the conditions but may be less ecologically valid than naturalistic observation. Merits, advantages of observation. 1. High validity. Observation can provide a high degree of validity because researchers directly witness and record behaviors or events as they occur. This minimizes the chances of recall bias or distortion of information. 2. Rich data. Observational data can be rich and detailed, allowing researchers to gain in-depth insights into behaviors, interactions, and contexts. It is especially useful for qualitative research. 3. Non-intrusive. In naturalistic observation, researchers do not interfere with the subjects, making it a non-intrusive method. This is particularly valuable when studying sensitive or private behaviors. 4. Useful in multidisciplinary research, observation can be applied in various disciplines, from psychology and anthropology to education and environmental science. It is versatile and adaptable to different research contexts. 5. Objective data. Well-designed observations can yield objective data, reducing the potential influence of biases associated with self-report measures. 6. Real-time data. Observation provides real-time data, allowing researchers to study events as they unfold. This is essential when studying dynamic or time-sensitive phenomena. Demerits, Disadvantages of Observation 1. Limited to observable behaviors, observation is limited to behaviors and events that can be observed. It cannot access thoughts, feelings, or internal states, making it less suitable for some types of research questions. 2. Observer bias, observer bias can occur when the researcher's presence influences the behavior of the subjects. This is particularly a concern in participant observation. 3. Resource-intensive. Observation can be resource-intensive in terms of time, cost, and human resources. It may require trained observers, equipment, and lengthy data collection periods. 4. Ethical concerns. In some cases, observation may raise ethical concerns, such as privacy issues or the need for informed consent. Researchers must navigate these ethical challenges carefully. 5. Limited generalizability. Findings from observations may not be easily generalized to larger populations or different settings. This can limit the external validity of the research. 6. Difficulty in recording all behaviors. In naturalistic settings, it may be challenging to record all relevant behaviors especially when there are many events or interactions occurring simultaneously. 7. Interpretation challenges. Qualitative observations may require interpretation, introducing the potential for subjectivity. Different observers may interpret the same event differently. 8. Intrusiveness in some cases. While naturalistic observation is non-intrusive, other types of observation, such as controlled or participant observation, may be intrusive and alter the subject's behaviors. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Education and Teacher Education at Shokin Bilal.